Welcome to our one year in review of owning our 79 series Land Cruiser. This month marks the one year anniversary of us having our 79 series Land Cruiser. Things that we've had done pre-rego, post-rego, added extras, the highs, the lows, the favourites, things that we would change next time if we were to do it again. When we initially went in and ordered, we were looking at like a seven grand kit a 14 grand kit and yeah. then i think the we didn't even we didn't even kit. consider the thirty thousand dollar kit no because we went no nah, that's far too expensive it's way out of our budget and how did we end up with the 30k kit it's just a, a mistake on the tick and flick mm. or yes yes dear yes dear <laughs> <laughs> okay, so to answer the nitty gritty question, how much did this suspension cost? It was around $32,000. So just to touch on the suspension a little bit, I think you wanted to talk about the dampening and how it's kind of fully adjustable based on what we want to do. The Outback Tourer kit comes with the 2.0 shock absorbers as standard, at least it did when we bought the kit, but we opted for the 2.5s. It just gives you a little bit more in terms of compression adjustment and shock rebound adjustment and those sorts of things it makes it more adaptable because like when we put the canopy on the back of the car that yeah. was one of the first things we were able to adjust so it was sitting pretty and sitting nice and tall with that massive amount of weight on the back and it yeah. still didn't ride any differently which was great after talking to a multitude of different people it made sense because we wanted the ability to be able to slide the canopy off and still have a nice ride to be able to adjust it so that it was nice and stiff when we had the canopy on. If we wanted to go full wheel driving, take the canopy off, ease up on the suspension so it was actually set up for four wheel driving. Mm. Just the possibilities was endless. And it looks like a mall crawler, but it doesn't move like a mall crawler. No. Which is one of the things that is probably our favorite. Which canopy did we choose? Oh, I opted for the Boss Aluminium M-Spec, the M4. Boss Aluminium, like why choose Boss Aluminium all the way down in Victoria for us? Like it is a long distance. Yeah. I really just liked the look of their setup. It's a fully modular canopy, which yeah. I think was one of our favorite things where we wanted something that could kind of grow with us. Yeah. Anyone who ever goes camping knows that you're packing changes every single time you go out on a trip. It always gets better, it gets more streamlined, you you pack more efficiently and we didn't want to put one particular type of setup in the canopy when it was probably going to change. If we're going to Fraser, same with Tiwa Beach, anyone who camps responsibly in these areas knows to take a proper chemical filled toilet. So those are quite big. We need to be able to fit that. Yeah. But then if we go out west, then it's a completely different setup again. A couple of things that I wanted to mention about this canopy as well is we've got an AGM battery in there. We're looking to obviously upgrade in the future. Lithium is the go, but budgets and things. We've got a thousand watt inverter. It's probably a regret. It's not quite big enough for what we need. It charges some of our equipment for now, so that'll be an upgrade. The only thing that I would change about the power setup in there is that it's very boxy. That's probably the one thing that it actually kind of gets in the way. I think ideally with the power setup, we would like it almost built into the headboard a little mm. bit more. Yep. So then for us, we've got a lot of things to charge um, even when we're off grid. So having that space there is almost like a semi desk storage area. Mm. It would serve us well if it was just that little bit bigger, a yep. little bit more streamlined of a setup. You've got USB plugs, you know, coming out the wazoo. Oh yeah, and plenty of USB this. sockets. I think in terms of fridge setup, the 130 liters was by far the best, the best decision choice. yeah um i know that they do 110 i know there's a couple of other options like the drop down things like that uh if you're gonna have a lifted car just go for an upright fridge where you can open it up straight away there's no drop down and still having to look into it or anything like that so in the end what was the price ticket on the canopy so 
the canopy came to around $24,000. Yeah, and I suppose one benefit with waiting for about nine months for our car meant that we were actually able to put that money aside and put it into items that we really wanted. Yeah. The next thing that we've got from Boss Aluminium is our tray that we've ordered and it's due to be ready to fit around April. So we will be heading back down to Victoria again for them to put that on. So we've gone for the M-Spec tray Gen 2, which has a 40 litre water tank in the headboard and it's got a couple of drawers, a couple of toolboxes, things like that. I think it's just going to complement the canopy massively. We've had the rooftop tent since August and we've taken it on how many trips? Probably four or five, uh, including a, a week long trip up to Townsville, which yeah. was the first time we actually took it away. So yeah. our first stay in our rooftop tent was after driving 10 hours and it was in Airlie Beach. We're no strangers to a swag, we're no strangers to roughing it a little bit, but having a rooftop tent to stay in is been the most luxurious, worth it addition we've ever had. Our rooftop tent is the AX27 by the Bush Company. And we also have the 270 Max awning to complement that. We chose a hard shell for a couple of reasons. We have previously owned a soft shell tent. From talking to some of my patients, actually, they've done some pretty pretty hardcore touring and they said that the soft shell was probably one thing that they would not recommend to someone else for those particular like vast differences like super super cold to super super hot yeah. because you get to the stage where it does end up affecting your material where you can't stretch it over the whole tent when you're when, when you're trying you, to pack it up. Look for a budget option 100% would do it again definitely but yeah. we decided this time that it was worth the upgrade. But it was also going to contribute to the height factor. Any day of the week, sitting as we are now, we're probably about 2.8 metres tall, yeah. which does not go through any drive-throughs, does not get you onto any rooftop parking. Underground parking Underground is parking out. is definitely a no. <laughs> like, you're parking outside or nothing else. And yeah. I think the thing for us is that adding another 30 centimetres on top of that just wasn't realistic for us. Like, yeah. we wanted streamlined, we wanted sleek, we wanted the least amount of wind resistance. And for me, I liked the idea of having a, a clamshell rooftop tent that you could still bolt things to. Like a modular sort of option, hey? It's kind yeah. of like that, yeah. I like having something that gives us a multitude of options. I like the idea of having a setup where in a year's time we go, another solar panel, bang. No worries, it'll still fit. Easy, yeah. If we've got anything that we want to add on there, because we don't always want to put things on our roof rack. Also with the rooftop tent, a couple of things that we love about it is the marine carpet, because you can stick anything to it. For Christmas, we got a Campac travel bag. The beauty of that is that- It comes with the Velcroed sides. <laughs> you can just unclip it, take it with you, which means that we've got a little bag that we can actually take up into the rooftop tent, stick to the roof. It's not in your bedding with you. We fit winter dunas, clothes, we fit pillows up there still able to pack it up it takes a little bit of practice I was able to do it on my own after the second time it's probably the easiest rooftop tent we've had to pack up the bush company give you two velcro pockets. packing pocket type yeah. things and it's like a his and hers type thing or a them and theirs you can take this off and you can pack it with a spare change of clothes or something roll it up leave it in the back of the car and then on your first step up the ladders you can just whack that straight up yeah. no worries and then when you're done you can take it back off again so despite the height we are always the first ones to be set up because it's yeah. two clips to open up the rooftop tent and it's one zipper the awning is literally like ladders up unzip it walk it out done we could definitely have that set up in 30 seconds and I'm not lying. We've done it in the blasting sun. We've done it in the rain. Yeah. We've done it with mosquitoes everywhere. We have tried this setup on Fraser Island when we were battered by some... A torrential storm. It was, it was quite winds. the storm. Yeah. yeah. We but were just battered. We East side of Fraser. Yeah. We were straight through and it, it stood the test. Didn't skip a beat. No. And everyone else, poor buggers, 
uh, you know, awnings collapsed and they're inflatable. Things were flying away. Mattresses well, were that's it, going yeah. down. So the things that we love about our Bush Company rooftop tent. Functionality and efficiency of the packing. Yep. The ease of opening, how quick it is. Love the marine carpet. My favourite thing about it is that it comes with two cigarette sockets and some USB points as well for charging, for charging. or for other lights or anything like that. It even comes with a light on top Your of that as well. toilet light to take with you. So there's three entrances. Yeah. Really. And they all completely unzip and open right out. So the beauty of the Bush Company setup is that you can have the ladder either side or at the back if you want to to get in and out the downsides to that setup that we found ladder when we first set it up we realized that our canopy extends past the edge of the rooftop tent and the bracket that comes with the rooftop tent isn't out far enough so our ladder would actually foul on the top of our canopy unbeknownst to us you can actually purchase extended brackets for ladders mm. on the bush company website we weren't aware of this at the time so we actually struggled for a while and also on that particular topic we weren't aware when we bought the actual awning that there is a separate bracket that you can get for the fly mm -hmm. so that it sits about six inches higher on the left hand side or whichever side you've got your awning to allow for your awning to clear. We actually got to Airlie Beach. Okay. This bloke, Jez, that was camping next door. And they had the exact night. same setup as us. And he explained to us like how to fix it and told us about it. If it wasn't for him, we would have thought that it was like completely our fault yeah. and that we were just we were just muppets with it but it yeah. turns out it's one piece of advice that we would definitely give if yeah. you're going to have the 270 awning set up with the rooftop tent you must have that bracket the only like constructive criticism i could have with the rooftop tent and this is the second one so this is the only other one we've got is the ladder although it is very clever in the way it is set up it's telescopic yeah um, we took it to Fraser. Fraser. It was our first real beach trip. It was great in the rain and the sand until you needed to pack it up and we have not been able to get it back into its bog standard packing yeah. configuration since. It fills with sand. It, it, doesn't it just doesn't anymore. want to slide. 10 out of 10 would recommend the Bush Company despite the ladder situation or anything like that. Like yeah. It, the pros definitely outweigh the cons. And notable mention as well is their customer service was oh, outstanding. Unreal. Any questions, touch base with us on social media. Yeah. Drop a comment and don't forget to like and subscribe if you like this video for more. Thank you very much. See you on the tracks.